Welcome back, Sweet Script developers, and we are going to continue here uh, tearing down our MapReduce script that deduplicates MAC addresses. So last time we had gone through our reduce phase uh, and kind of extracted a lot of the logic out into different functions. Um, our summarize phase is already nicely uh, extracted out. So what I want to tackle next is organizing some of these functions. Um, so even, you know, a 581 line module um, is still not, it's too large for me. Uh, for me, it's too large. We have this, this one module that is, uh, it contains the entry points. It contains uh, logic to read a CSV. It contains logic to process a MAC address. It contains logic to parse CSVs. It contains logic to handle errors. Uh, there's just too much. There's too many different things going on in the same module for me. So uh, when I go about designing a, a sizable project like this, I like my script in my entry point modules to contain the entry points and just about nothing else. Um, and so what I want to do is start adding new modules, uh, new custom modules to help structure some of this logic and reorganize it and isolate it. So I think I want to start with the errors. Um, oops, they are, they're all nicely, uh, they're already written for us. Um, and they all, they're nicely grouped together. So what I want to do is just take the error handling we already have and separate that out into its own modules. So we're going to have its own, this project will have its own module dedicated to the error handling uh, in this script. So let's do that. Make a new module. I'm going to shift my, the main module of mine over to the left. And here is our new module. Uh, I'm going to get rid of a lot of this stuff, but all right. So then I'm just going to take the error functions from the first module, cut them out and drop them in here. And let's see, we need the runtime module, we need the log module, we need the email module, and the error module. Okay. Let's do that. If you're yelling at me because the log module is optional, you are correct. However, I like to be explicit about my dependencies. Um, the log module along with the util module are always loaded into 2.0 scripts. They are effectively global modules, so you don't need to explicitly add them as a dependency, but I like to do so anyway. Um, and that should be really all we need to do. No, that is not true. We need to actually export these modules so that other modules can use them. Error in stage, there are two others. Okay, so we have added our modules, we have put our functions in, we have exported them. Now we need to add our new module here. So we put this in the same directory. We will call this Mac errors. And we will update all of our catch blocks. So 
So notice how, I mean, we didn't have to change any of the logic, right? We kept the APIs, we kept the inputs and the outputs of all these functions the same. All we did was move them into a new module. Um, okay, and so we're gonna do something similar then for some of our other functions. So obviously the, the entry points are going to stay here. We're not gonna move our entry points to some different script. Um, and the read parameters is short enough and specific enough. I typically will leave that function in here as well. The rest of these, I think, are good candidates. Well, perhaps not the rest of these, but many of these are good candidates to be put into... Um, well, first of all, this result split, we're no longer using this. This was an artifact of um, the string format that we were using to pass data from get input data into map. Uh, we don't do that anymore as we, we kind of redid that structure. So we can just delete that function. We no longer need that. Um, but a lot of times what I'll do uh, with a project like this, um, I will have my entry point script. Um, I might have an error handling script like this. When your error handling uh, is significant enough, it has uh, all this logic and it's uh, sending emails and things like that, then definitely um, a separate module for that is, is warranted. Um, but I almost always have kind of a core module for the project that represents the primary business logic. And I typically just name that. So we can see that um, all of these scripts I've prefixed with Mac dedupe because this is the Mac address deduplication project. Um, and so over here, I, I call this map dedupe MR for map reduce. Uh, the refactor is mostly just because of this teardown. Um, but so I prefix all those and then the core, the core business logic of the project is contained in just the, uh, there's no suffix, there's no script type, it's just Mac dedupe or whatever the project happens to be. Uh, so let's get rid of again some of this. And for that, I am pretty much going to take all of this. Let's think about this. Uh, certainly these four are very entwined with the, the, dupl the deduplication process. The rest of these, these three are more about data retrieval, right? Reading the CSV file, um, searching, doing a search for the MAC address records, uh, and then translating the CSV data into objects. These are much more about data retrieval and translation than they are about the actual deduplication logic. And so I think I am gonna just take these four. I'm looking for uh, modules that we need to import. I'm not sure that there are any. There's none in here. I don't believe there are any in here. There are none in here. And there are none in here. So this this module itself has no, oops. Good thing I moved this, I caught a little mistake here. All right. So this module itself has no other dependencies. Um, but once again, we want to add this. And I'll probably put this first. Well, here, go first. Okay. 
Okay. So none of that was used, none of that module was used anywhere but the reduce phase. So this becomes, oh, that. And then we compare records, the core items, and update the duplicate. Okay, those are the only places that was used. So we should be set, should be all set there. All right. And I think I might take this opportunity to extract this into a new function over here. Uh, we need to be passed in the MAC address, which is what this represents. And then we need to export that. Now, if I go back to my little collapsed view here, what else can we eliminate? So I think these, as I mentioned, these <clears throat> are uh, relevant to the data retrieval and manipulation for Mac dedupe. So I think I'm gonna, again, cut these and make yet another new module. Um, probably normally I would just call it data, um, but I wanna be a little clearer in this video as Let's see which, so we need the search module, we need the file module. We will need the parse CSV method. Uh, so we'll have to figure that out. To be honest, I already have that solution in my head, but we just haven't got there yet. <laughs> All right, so we need the search module. Uh, we need the file module. Make a note so we remember to do that. Okay, that takes care. I think we have all the modules covered in this function. What about this one? Search, log. Okay, we need the log module. I think that's gonna be it. We do need the process Mac function. So uh, I think that one, this function is only used, this function here, is only used here. So I think I'm just gonna pull this into the module here. And it does not need to be exported, right? It's not used anywhere else. It's, this function is not used anywhere outside this function or outside this module, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm not gonna export it. But in the event you do need uh, this MAC address processing uh, somewhere else, you could export it or in that event, you might even consider moving this to its own module. Um, but if we see anything from this, it should be that it is, as long as you keep the inputs and outputs the same, it is very, very easy to move functions into modules and between modules. Um, you don't wanna be doing it all the time. You want some stability in your code base um, and you wanna be uh, thinking and designing you know, ahead, but in the event you do need to move uh, a function somewhere, uh, don't let that intimidate you because it is not difficult. Um, uh, this one, let's make a note to come back to this. But the function is here. Uh, are there any other modules? Any other modules we need? I've got the log. I think that's it. I think that is all the modules. now. So the only thing left to handle is that CSV, um, this function here. And so let's get to that. So there's this module is taken care of. Let's, let's import this module and then data 
manipulation. Let's call this Mac data. There is those two. And actually, I think find Mac records is only used in here. That's actually not a public function either, so we don't need to export that. Now, honestly, we could probably make just one public function for this module, and so that get input data would only call, would only need to talk to this module once, and it would send it all the inputs it needs and get all the outputs. Um, and actually, I might do that. No, I'm going to leave it for now. But oftentimes, that's a pretty common design pattern I'll follow is that when it's when the module is more about uh, the process flow, I, I only want the script to talk to it once, send it all the data it needs and get back all the data and get back all the data it needs. Um, in this case, I will leave that for now. That is a, an exercise that you can do on your own. <laughs> um, okay. So the next thing I wanted to take care of was the um, CSV. So this is a generic, very generic utility for parsing CSV data. It has nothing to do with our Mac deduplication project, other than the fact that our deduplication project depends on it and needs it and needs to parse CSV. But this could have much wider usage. Uh, you might have all kinds of projects that involve parsing CSV data. Uh, and so what I would advocate is taking this and putting it in its own uh, kind of generic CSV utility. Um, if this were like the actual file cabinet, I would not even put it in the same directory uh, as this project. It would probably be up a level in some, uh, you know, more generic, more uh, available, accessible directory. But in this case, just to represent um, the fact that I'm, I would be putting it in a different directory. I, w I will put it in a, at least in a subdirectory. Uh, and I'm not going to prefix it with map dedupe because it's not, it doesn't uh, belong to this project. It, it exists outside of, of this project. Oops, parse CSV. When you start, by the way, when, Let's, I'm gonna put that back in. When your code, when you start refactoring your code so that you're writing smaller focused functions and, and, uh, and modules, you stop needing comments like this uh, because your, your code base gets much smaller. So uh, or the, your code base doesn't get smaller as a whole, but the individual pieces that you're looking at get much smaller. And so you're not scrolling hundreds of lines uh, trying to keep track of which closing brace is which. When you can fit the whole function on one screen, you no longer need those, like this bracket ends this block. Uh, those, the need for that goes away. Uh, so I, I literally never write those types of comments because I never need to. And I mean literally there in the correct sense of literally. <laughs> I, I actually never write those types of comments because I don't need them, because my functions fit on one page, because uh, my blocks of code are small and focused, uh, and because I tend to avoid nesting like this. Uh, in this case, this is... I have no suggestions for how to rewrite this. I am not in the business of writing CSV parsing utilities. Uh, so I'm sure this is great and works. Uh, it's just an example of I tend to avoid structures like this in my business logic. Um, okay. So there is our CSV module. Let's rip out some of this stuff again. Uh, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull this out. I still want this. There, you can do stuff like use proper JS doc tags. Um, not really sure why 
why this is there and comment it out. Not make extra rows. Okay, well, I'll leave it there for posterity, I suppose. Um, okay, there's our generic CSV utility, so let's pull that in. So I put that in the util or utils subdirectory. Okay, that goes after the errors. Okay, um, and then where is my? Oh, actually, we don't need that module here. That's my fault. We actually need that module here. CSV, oh, I can't call it CS. Well, I'm going to refactor this. Like that. I don't want them both named CSV. I can't have the module and a variable named CSV. Okay. That should take care of that. So that is done. I'll come back to you. And so now by adding these modules, the last thing I want to do is go through here and see did we, by, by uh, adding all these modules, did we, I've got some blank lines, did we uh, remove the need for any of them in this script? Um, this create summary record, I think, Again, there is nothing here. Hmm. There's nothing here that is specific to our max deduplication function. You could drop this function into any map reduce. Uh, and it will all have this the same data and it will mean the same thing. Which has me wanting to put this in some kind of map reduce utility uh, method. Except for this right here. So let me go look at this. Now the same is sort of true about this. There is nothing in here, <clears throat> excuse me, that talks about our map uh, reduce, our specific deduplication project. Whereas in here, there is, right? There's a, the message we're adding and the error name here are very specifically uh, Mac address related. Um, so this is probably okay here. What I would actually probably do, um, I'm trying to avoid making this eight hours of watching me code. So, um, but what I might do, um, it depends. Kind of depends on the account. If I had, a, if I was using a lot of MapReduce scripts, I would probably make a separate MapReduce utility and put this, this function, and this function in there together, maybe even this one as well. Um, and then this one would be the only one left that is specific to our Mac deduplication project. Um, but for now, this is okay. I think this is fine in here. It's not, it's not hurting anything. It's not taking it too much space. It's fairly straightforward. Um, and so, with all of that, so let's see, what did I say? So we're not using the file module anymore, so we can get rid of that one, uh, at least in this script. I don't think, I think there should be several we're able to get rid of. Where are we using the uh, search module?
Let's see. Search. Yeah, we're not using the search module anywhere. Ooh, this will have a lot of matches, but that's okay. Uh, well, find. Okay, we use it in reduce. That's okay. How about email? I don't think email gets used anywhere. No usages. Runtime definitely gets used right here, right away. Error. No usages. Okay. So we got rid of several module dependencies by doing this. We didn't get rid of them, we just reallocated them. We just re refactored them, relocated them. Uh, but if I slide this back to the right side, again, on the left is our original code, on the right is our new code. Uh, you can see this MapReduce script is now 207 lines long as compared to this uh, 610 lines originally. Now, we didn't get rid of, we didn't really get rid of any of that code, maybe a few dozen lines, maybe. We have just reorganized it, restructured it in a way that the nitty gritty details are obscured from us until we need them. Um, when we need them, they're there, and they're they're there in such a way that so when I need to look at how I translate CSV data into objects, I can go look at just that function and focus uh, just there rather than trying to weed through uh, one single monolithic file. Um, just like you wouldn't put all the logic for every single script record you've ever written and use the same file for all your scripts. You don't need the same file for your entire project either. Um, you want to practice this. Um, I don't want to call it obfuscation or obscuring, but this um, isolation of logic. Um, the more elements that you can turn into kind of a black box, uh, the better. Um, and then that way you can get the high level idea of what a script is doing with a quick scan and then dig in to the details as you need them. Okay. I think that if we take a quick scan back through, I'm still not satisfied with this reduce, but I'm going to deal with it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's most of the way there, I would say. There's probably some other steps I would take in, in kind of handling some things, some of maybe this stuff. Um, I might encapsulate, encapsulation is the word I was looking for. I might encapsulate s some more of this logic uh, again, so that maybe we're only talking to the the Mac dedupe module once and calling one method rather than uh, four. But again, maybe I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Um, the one thing we did want to go through, there's definitely one thing we can refactor back here. Uh, I've seen this a few times now. I think there's another place where we do the split join. Oh, there was. We deleted that function. Uh, okay, so split and join. So what is this doing? Um, actually, let's, if I copy this and dump it in the console, let's clear. Obviously, we don't have a log method. Uh, we don't need try catch right now. So what does this do? This splits on the space on spaces and it splits on a space and then joins. 
So if I do A, B, C, D, F, what I should get back is the same string without the space. Cool. Uh, same thing if I add a bunch of stuff like colons, semicolon, dash, underscore, what are some of the other, equal sign, any of those, I should still get back A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, cool. So all this is doing is removing unnecessary characters. Uh, at least these. So split, join, split, join, split, join, split, join, split, that. We don't need to do that. Instead, we can take all of those syllables, syllables, symbols, characters, um, and combine them into a single regex and use the replace method. Instead of split and join, we are going to use the replace method. So if we take all of these, I imagine we want to remove any white space. Um, so regexes are a brand new skill. I mean, I'm not brand new skill. Uh, if regexes are brand new to you, they are an important skill to develop. Um, very powerful, but very steep learning curve, I would say. So, gee. let's start our regex like this. Uh, space. And we'll just put all these characters in here, colon, semicolon, dash, underscore, uh, quote, double quote specifically, single quote also, Oops. equal sign, okay. So instead of, I'm gonna cut this. Instead of all of these split joins here, I'm going to just comment them out. Instead of all that, uh, bad characters. So all these are commented, and all I want to do is say mac fix equals uh, mac fix dot replace. And we want to replace the bad characters with nothing, with an empty string. I'll come back to the length stuff in a little bit. So let's see if we accomplished the same thing. Let's go back, come on. Uh, so here's the same, I'm invoking the same function, just with different logic, and I should, hopefully, if I did this right, get back A, B, C, D, E, F. Not quite. So that is just because my regex is wrong. Um, why is it wrong? I think I need... this try that again now let's just copy oh that's closer oh right because the hyphen is a special character escape that paste again there we go okay so instead of doing all these different split joins, we can use regexes and the replace uh, method instead. So so really this to there. So instead of what we see on the right, we can have. Well, I don't want to do it that way. Oops. Ooh, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, anyway, we can get rid of all this, all these lines, delete them. <laughs> Grab our bad characters, regex. So this is saying uh, everything between the slashes here is our regex. 
uh, the square brackets indicate um, a group of characters, I believe, or maybe, yeah, a group of characters. So it's saying any of these characters in between the, uh, or it, it will match any character in between the square brackets there. And then we use, uh, we call our replace. So replace the bad characters, which are any of these, anywhere. Uh, the G says anywhere in the string. So replace the bad characters, any of these, anywhere anywhere in MacFix. Uh, replace them with an empty string or, or delete them effectively. I'm not quite sure what the length is doing. So what is that second? Let's get rid of our console string split. What is that second? A limit. Integer specifying a limit on the number of splits. Are we just trying to limit the string to 12 characters? We are splitting on the empty string. Um, what does that do? Okay, so we're splitting on an empty string, and then which which basically splits our string into an array of characters, kind of explodes the string into its individual characters, but then we just rejoin it back into the original string. I'm not 100% sure what the intent is here. This, this line effectively does nothing. We explode the string and then recombine the string. So I don't know why that's here. Um, and this, we're checking if the length is greater than 12. Uh, we don't even need to do that. So if we look at the substring behavior, uh, so uh, the idea is to grab the first 12 characters. Uh, is the purpose of this. Um, if there, if the string that you give it has less than 12, it doesn't pad it out. There's not a whole bunch of empty, empty characters or anything like that. So we don't even need to check this length. And We also don't, so we're gonna, we can combine a lot of this. Uh, this does not need to be inside the try catch. This is not a helpful comment. Um, and we can, we can really get rid of a lot of this stuff. Um, Okay, cut, I'm gonna take this out, paste. This becomes Mac incoming. I'm going to replace the bad characters, then cap it at 12 characters. Um, if you, it's kind of nice to break that into another line uh, so you can clearly see that there are two steps. Um, this does not need to be in the try catch either. So that can be out here. Oops. Uh, there. So we've taken that function from you know, the 20 lines or whatever it was before. down to two effectively two or three depending on how you want to count them 
um, that's really none of that has anything to do with sweet script that's all these are all native javascript methods and objects object types um, but this will be a lot this will operate a lot quicker uh, and the code is more concise than splitting joining splitting joining splitting joining all of that stuff um, okay now uh, there's probably some other things we could do in here um, definitely one thing I would go back through after this is logging um, we've made a lot of new functions um, and lots of new data types and things like that and I would absolutely be going back um, and adding logging to all of our new functions and modules and, and things like that both audit level and debug I already have a video out there on my the logging pattern that I follow uh, that there'll be a link somewhere up above you right now um, or up above the video rather probably not up above you <laughs> um, but uh, that already describes kind of the pattern that I would follow so I highly recommend you watch that video and then you could kind of apply the same thing um, a lot of what it is is adding a log you know every time we enter a new function uh, so that when we see errors in the logs uh, the execution logs in NetSuite, we know exactly which function failed. But I think that is going to do it 